in my mind. It said, what will people remember about you when you're gone? When we leave this world and death takes over our bodies, what will people remember about us? Well, they say, oh, Mark Cartridge was a good mechanic. Well, they say, well, oh, Brother Marty worked with the lineman a long time. Whatever, you know, just thinking about that. Oh, John McPherson was a pretty good old preacher. You know, what will they really remember about our lives? Have we had a good influence on people? Have we made a difference? I don't know about you, but I want to make a difference. I want to be able to help people. If I can make their life a little bit better, I want to be able to do that. If I can say a word of encouragement, Sister Kay, in their time of need that would help them, then that's what I want to do. I want to make a difference. People live in this world all their life. And when they're gone, people really remember nothing about them. So I want you to ponder the thought today while I'm preaching to you today. Just ponder that thought. What would people say about me? Watch the little old thing. I used to like to watch the old Jeffersons. Old George was a mess. He could just get irate in just a flash. One day I was looking at him and he was attending one of his buddy's funerals. You know what George was thinking about? He died owing me money. <laughs> he died owing me money. George was thinking in his mind, that sorry rascal. I'll never get my money back. You reckon some folks would not remember us that way? Huh? <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I hope you got your bills paid up and your debts paid up, amen, when that time comes. Amen. For us to leave this world that people can remember us in a good manner. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. Matthew, chapter 5. Seem like I preached along these... Verses here a year or so ago, but the Lord just brought it back to my remembrance this week And I was actually preparing for another different sermon and I just felt led to go back here just to God's word and look at this again Amen Matthew Did I say five or nine? Five beginning with verse 13 Talking about the salt and the light Matthew 5, beginning with verse 13 through 16. Jesus said, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Then Jesus transitions a little bit and says, Ye are the light. Of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us all pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, I love you, I thank you, I praise you. Lord, for this great privilege this Sunday morning to stand before this wonderful and beautiful congregation of men and women acknowledging that we're here today through and by the mercy and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Nothing so much good that I have done but by the grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Of our almighty God. I pray today, O oh Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, each and every day that we live in this world. To make a difference, Lord, to be of good influence. I pray, O oh Lord God, use us this morning. That we could say something today, Lord. Do something, Lord, that would make a difference in somebody's life in this place. Lord, I don't want to preach just to be preaching, but I want to preach, Lord, that it would be effective in making a difference in our hearts and in our lives. That when our day does come, when our name is called, and we leave this world, we can have made a difference in somebody's life. Lord, anoint us and use us now for your use and for your glory. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And the church said amen and amen. Shake a few hands. Tell them it's good to see them this morning in the house of the Lord, would you? Greet one another. Greet, love one another. You are the salt of the earth, if I could start here this morning. But if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot, underfoot of men. How many like salt? I said, how many like salt? There you go. That's a, that's a butter. Amen. <laughs> salt makes a difference, doesn't it? In seasoning our food. Brother Mark, I thought about you this week as I was preparing the sermon. You know, once you've had a heart attack or anything of that nature, the first thing they do is want to take you off of salt. Change your diet. Change your eating habits. And it just about changes your world, don't it? Because everything that's been good to you and you were used to, it seems like that's the things they want you to quit. Right? And so you have to change everything up. It's a sacrifice, isn't it? Because I don't know about you. I've never been in the hospital for anything, thank the Lord. But my wife has been there and, I, and I've tried to eat their food. Especially if they send it up to your room and, and, you know, the patient don't eat it and you're going to eat it. That's some nasty stuff. It really is, isn't it? No seasoning because they don't want the patient to have any of that stuff, you know. And, 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 and no, 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 no uh, good grease in it, you know. Those things that's not good for us. My wife and I were eating yesterday and there was a piece of fat on that meat. That's the best part of the meat there is to me. Huh? And I chewed it for a while, and I said, I, I shouldn't be doing this. But shucks, man, it was good. And I thought about after that stuff dries up, what does it look like? Anybody ever poured out hot grease and go back and look at it when it dries up? It's pure like lard, ain't it? It reminds me when my father-in-law them killed hogs. So Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. If seasoning has no flavor, it has no value. In other words, you take salt, and if salt gets moisture in it, it loses its flavor. 
And that's why he said, it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden underfoot of men. Why? Because that salt has a lost its savor, its flavorness. And so when that happens, brothers and sisters, it's good for nothing. And he said, once that happens, the salt has lost its savor. Wherewith shall it be salted? The only thing you can do is replace that salt. How many of you, when you're working in the yard in the heat, you go in the house, you dry off, and there's a white ring around your clothes. You know what that is? Salt that you've lost out of your body. And if you're not careful, if you lose too much, Brother Marty, you'll start cramping. Right? Come on, y'all stay with me this morning. Why? Because you've lost so much of that salt ingredient out of your body that you start cramping. I played a lot of ball in my life, and you guys, a lot of you guys have done the same. A few years ago, we was in High Point up there, and we were playing ball, and the guy started cramping. I saw a guy take a ball of mustard and turn it up to his mouth. I've done it a few times myself since then. It's nasty, but it'll relieve those cramps. So you've got to replace that salt in your body in order to stop those cramps. Some people just take some salt, put it in their mouth. Some people like pickle juice. You know, playing ball, you learn these little tricks of the trade. You know, or working out in the heat. So you have to learn to replace that or replenish that so you can be flavorable. I didn't say flavor flavor. Some of y'all probably seen that crazy looking guy with the big clock around his neck. I ain't talking about him. I'm talking about us as an individual this morning. That if we're not careful as Christians, we lose the flavorableness out of us. The saltiness evaporates from us. I thought about what you said, Sister uh, Wednesday night, Sister Kay, about the love of God. And I thought as I was preparing the sermon for today, if you and I don't replace or re- keep it replenished, I say not replace, to replenish the love of God in our lives, to let it grow in us and grow and grow. How do we do that, preacher? We do it through the study of God's Word. Through prayer, through fasting, through seeking God. Our life becomes more Christian salty, if you will. I said to you a moment ago, when you leave this world, what will people remember about you? Have you made a good influence on somebody? Have we made a difference or we just lived our life to suit our own fancy? People look at you and say, that was a selfish fellow. He wouldn't help nobody. Or do we live our life in such a manner that when we're gone, they say, you know, that was truly a child of God. Because every time I seen them, they had a smile on their face. They were loving Jesus. And through that, they made a difference in my life. I talked to my brother-in-law, Rocky, last night. I've been giving him requests for him for a long time here. A lot of times maybe I didn't give him requests, but I'll always pray for him. He was one on my prayer list because my brother-in-law has been an alcoholic for 20 years. And some of you have dealt with alcoholism. You know how that stuff affects your life. And Every night he gets off from work, he has to go straight to his barn out there, and he sits and drinks till dark. Comes in, gets a bath, goes to bed, same routine the next day. But he called me last week and he asked me for prayer. 
and we prayed, and Sunday was a week ago. He went down to the altar, and the Lord gloriously saved his soul. And he's called me several times this week, and then I called him last night, and I asked his wife, and normally I would ask her, I said, where's Rock at? I called him Rock. That devil's out there in the building drinking where he's always at. When I called last night, she said, would you like to speak to my husband? <laughs> Woo! Amen. Would you like to talk to my sweet husband, she said. He's reading his Bible. You all know that in that type of situation and condition, he's got a hard road ahead of him. You know, because, because that, that addiction that he's had for 20 years ain't just going to go away. There'll be temptation there. There'll be situations that will come up, uh, uh, Pastor Williams, that would want to influence him again. I said influence. Him again to go back to drinking. That's the devil of hell. How many of us have been influenced since we've been a child of God to go back and do the devil's work? If we'll all be honest, we've all had those temptations and those evil influences. How many times have the devil spoke to me and said, you ought to just go back and do what you was used to doing? You're not making any difference in people's lives. Huh? He's probably told you some of the same stuff along those lines. Huh? Has your life really changed since you become a Christian? Look at you. Huh? I told you how he beguiled Eve in the garden. Huh? He seduced a lot of people along the way. I think I might have said it last week, or sister might have said it Wednesday night. He's a sweet talker. Huh? He don't come in no pitchfork and, and a road, does he? Long tail. No, he wears three-piece suits. He wears long granny dresses. Come on, stay with me, church. Huh? He comes in a lot of different disguises. But Jesus said, ye are the salt. Of the earth. You and I are to be making a difference. You may not get out and go like I go and meet a lot of people. But in your community. In the neighborhood that you live in. You ought to be influencing somebody else in a good way. I'm going slow because I want you to think about this sermon this morning. Because a lot of Christians... You know, I, I, I told you about the young lady, uh, young, I call, still call her young lady, she's 82 years old. I shared this this morning in the prayer request, and don't forget to play for, pray for uh, Randy Norris's mother down here, Miss Eula. Uh, we were coming through there yesterday, and my wife and I were on the motorcycle, and we saw people uh, stopping in front of us in a car from Kentucky, and several guys jumped out of the car from Kentucky. And I saw him running to her house, and when I got there, I saw her. And so I pulled over at Mr. Randy's house, and, and I tried to find him, and I couldn't. But anyhow, make a long story short, I got William, and uh, that's on the um, fire and rescue. And I said, call the ambulance, buddy. I said, Miss Eula has failed. I said, I don't know the extent of it. I said, but she is pouring blood. I do know that. I could see it from the road. And when we got there, she fell off the top doorstep, and there was a cement brick column there. And it went through the her eye and her skull and so when we got there and, and saw all that blood and she was still conscious but I just talked to William a few minutes ago and he said preacher unless and there's a miracle she won't make it at 82 years of age but you know brother small when I walked back up there because I, I had run down to her house from Randy's and when I got back to Randy's I told my wife we join hands right there in the front yard I said, let's pray. Miss Eula needs our prayers right now. 
I'm talking about making a difference this morning, folks. In people's lives around us. Let me just go one step further before I preach too much this morning. Are we even making a difference in our children's lives? I didn't say they had to be living for the Lord. I said, are we making a difference? And they know the way. Why? Because you've lived it in front of them. You've preached it. You've taught it. You've walked it. You've lived it day in and day out. And see, they know the right way. Huh? And Sister Kay, it might be after we're gone that it makes a difference in their life, that it influences them in some way, somehow. And I heard what you said about Kayla this morning, amen. Some of you that wasn't here uh, been praying. Uh, she's been taught the right way. Uh, why? Because she stayed with Nan and Papa here, uh, amen. She was little, uh, and they taught her the right way. Uh, and this week, uh, she finally accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and her Savior. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, it's time that you and I influence others and make a difference in their lives. It ain't always about preaching them a sermon. It ain't always cramming the Bible down their throat because you turn people off a lot of times. It's about effectively living a life in front of them that would cause them to want to live that same life. Brother Mark, we've tried to do that for years out on this ball field. Huh? Try to set an example before people. I try to do it wherever I go to make a difference in people's lives. I, I haven't lost this one. I know where I'm at. He said, you're the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, huh? if you put too much salt on something, it's a kick in it, isn't it? Huh? It'll lock your jaws. Huh? I imagine this morning if some of you lick this. Huh? Anybody know what this is? Salt block. Huh? You take cows, Brother Neely, horses, put a big old white block out there. And they'll lick that block ever so often. And when they do, they're going to find a water trough. You know why? Because they're thirsty. Anybody like ham? Cut your ham in here. We do, don't we, Brother Bay? My wife likes it. I'm, I'm not too much keen for it. I'll eat it every once in a while. Amen. But when I do, I find myself hunting some water. You know why? Because I've got some salt in my system. Mm. When that cow or that whatever licks this thing right here, I believe this has got a deer on the front of it. Brother Lacey brought this to me. It makes them want to find some water. I hope and pray that our life is so salty that when we get around other people, Preach, Brother John. It'll make them get thirsty for what you and I have on the inside of us. My God Almighty, what are you telling me, preacher? It's time to go to the salt block. And it's time to lick the salt and get some saltiness in us. It's time we go back to the altar and find us a place of prayer that we can get some more seasoning in our spirit. It's time to go back to the Bible and read God's word that we can get some saltiness in our spirit. That it will make a difference in somebody else's lives. This is pretty strong. But just maybe, just maybe, that you would ha like to have a little of this. Huh? Most of you that cook ladies know what this is. Huh? More than salt. I never try to add this to my food once it's cooked. Because it's not good for you that way. My wife is a good seasoning lady. And she knows how to season it. Huh? When you cook it, sis. 
and it does something to the taste of your food. Anybody ever had grits without this? Huh? You talking about bland? Is that where they use bland? Yeah. Sister Sarvis, you use salt and you cook? Not much. I don't want your cooking. <laughs> if you was cooking for me, you could use it, though, couldn't you, sister? Uh, I'd let you use it, sister. I know what she's saying. Her husband can't have this kind of stuff. We got Brother Mark, different ones in here that can't have this kind of stuff, but this will make a difference in your food. Huh? And, and I'm, not, I'm not advocating that you use this morning. What I'm doing is making a replication from this to this. Huh? I said, I'm not advocating everybody to go home and, and salt all of your food down and all that. And when you get high blood pressure, you come back to the preacher and say, Pay my bill. It ain't happening. I'm not advocating you go out and lick the salt block either. Huh? But there are times in our life, if this was spiritual, that we run out of this. We get low. And we've got to go back and find something that we can put in us that will help us become more salty, more, more seasonable, and to reach somebody else. But we're living in a world today when a lot of folks are on this. Mrs. Dash. Now, if you are, I'm not picking on you. But spiritually, this won't do you no good. Are y'all with me? Huh? Because Mrs. Dash is a substitute. For the real deal. Good. Mm. I said Mrs. Dash is just a substitute for the real deal. Sister Sarvis, a lot of people have traded in the real deal for a substitute. They, they got rid of Sister K of the real deal. Now, this is spiritual. The Word of God. Praying, coming to church, seeking the Lord, calling upon His name. We, we, we've traded this in. Hallelujah. It's like the old songwriter said, just a little talk with you. And I know we sang it this morning, but I believe we traded in the sweet hour of prayer for just a little talk with Jesus. I said, I believe we've traded Him in for a substitute for something else that does not work, that does not benefit, and we will not produce a godly woman nor a godly man nor a godly life. We've got to come back to the real seasoning and get salted again that we might be influenceable on somebody else's life. I'm not saying this is wanting to make you feel good but doesn't it feel good when people look at you and say I know you're a Christian. Huh? When it's like sometimes somebody looked at you and said, man, I can tell you're a Christian, sister. I can tell you're a Christian, brother. By the way you carry yourself. By the way you talk, the way you walk, or whatever. Huh? That's what's going to make a difference in people's lives, folks. It ain't how much you sing. Ain't even how much you run these aisles and shout. Huh? It's how we live when the singing's gone. Brother Ant, when the shout is gone, and we ain't got a piano player, we ain't got an organist, and there ain't nobody but us in Jesus. Come on, somebody help me today. Hallelujah, that's the thing I'm talking about. Shouting is good and shouting is wonderful. And I love it when the time is right. Amen. Hallelujah, and I love to sing. Amen, or try to sing when the time is right. But my friend, listen, if, you, if this is all you got, singing will not benefit nobody else. If this is all you got, your everyday living will not influence nobody else. What I'm trying to tell us as children of God, 
God. We ought to be on the real deal. Hallelujah. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling you there's a time to trade in Miss Dash for the real deal, the real salt of God's word. It's time to get off of the bottle and get on some meat that you might be established in Jesus Christ. If the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? The world can't salt you. Singing may help you a little bit, but it can't really salt you. Shouting's good. It's good exercise. But it don't really salt you. See, when I work out at the gym, I'm taking out everything. I'm breaking down the muscles that I had built up earlier. You break all that down so that I have time to rebuild, refurbish, and try to get a little bit stronger, hopefully. When I leave the gym, I'm looking for something to go back in my system. When I get through playing a ball game, I'm looking for something, preacher. Huh? You played a lot of ball. You know exactly what we're talking about. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, listen. It's time, it's time, it's time that we get back in our prayer closets. Hallelujah. It's time that we push the plate aside, amen, physically and get spiritually fed through God and through His Spirit and through the Word of Almighty God. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we're living in a day and an hour, amen. Listen to a preacher just yesterday, and this was, I believe it was Brother Jones again. I just listened to some of his old uh, CDs, amen, and he was talking talking to me about, uh, amen, about demon possession. Uh, and he used the word of God and how bad it was five years ago uh, versus today. Uh, can you imagine how bad it is today uh, when evil spirits uh, are lurking among us, uh, trying to cause us to go back out into the world, uh, trying to hinder me from preaching this morning, uh, trying to hinder you from getting what God uh, wants you to get out of this church service today. There's always a hindrance. Uh, there's always a stumbling block. Uh, but I'm telling you, wherever Hallelujah. Wherever evil abounds, the grace of God doth much more abound. Where evil's at, God's grace and mercy is still sufficient for each and every child of God in here. So tired of people saying, well, I just can't live this life, preacher. Why not? It's the best life you'll ever live. I said, it's the best life you'll ever live. Huh? Brother Neely, we won't wake up with a hangover in the morning. Huh? Won't wonder how in the world we got home. Huh? Of course, that could flow over into the spirit realm there. Because I've seen them when we used to have to carry them out and put them in the car. Anybody remember that? Huh? Most of y'all too young. There's a few of you here. Amen. I, I grew up in camp meeting days, you know, when the sawdust was on the floor, sis. Uh, and when you sat on buckets uh, and theater benches that didn't have this cushion stuff on them. Uh, hard as a rock, preacher. Amen. Amen. I grew up because I, I, hey, I was made to go to church and do those kind of things. Uh, my daddy might not have been a Christian, but he sent me to church. Amen. And thank God he sent me to church. Uh, I said, are you with me this morning? Uh, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, amen. Uh, daddy might have not been a Christian, but he made sure we were in church uh, on Sundays. Amen. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, uh, and because of what daddy did, uh, amen, it might have been through uh, just a good moral teaching of his or whatever, uh, or ignorance or whatever you want to call it but there was one thing about it he made sure I was in church and through that amen the word of God was instilled on the inside of me amen sister Dean I might have went back into the world when I became a teenager but there was one thing about it the salt that had been put in my spirit never did fade away it never did completely go out of me you know why because once it's inside of a man you'll never be the same 
name. Do I have anybody here that knows what I'm preaching to you this morning? Once the salt of the spirit has entered inside of a man, he will never be the same again. In the book of Leviticus, Leviticus tells us when they would offer a meat offering, they would do the salt. Did you know this is still used? It's called the salt of the covenant. And it's still used by Arabs today. When they make a covenant agreement, they'll sprinkle this on a piece of bread. And they'll eat it. It's called the salt covenant in Leviticus. Huh? So that sounded crazy. It's in the book. Huh? And when they would offer a meat offering, they would put salt in the meat. You know why? Salt is a preservative. Huh? I talked to some of these funeral home workers. I didn't think you could... Bury somebody without embalming them. But I found out here recently you can. But you got to get them in the ground quick. Huh? They die today, probably the next day or the following day. You got to be in the ground. Why? Because your body decays. It rots. It goes back to the dust from which it came. Huh? But for those, Sister Claire Bell, that are embalmed, you can keep them up for a week. They just keep adding a little bit more embalming fluid to them, whatever. You know, I ever had to do that stuff, preacher. You know about all that stuff. I don't. But I know it'll preserve them. Huh? It'll keep them. Huh? What's that got to do with this, preacher? This'll keep you. In a day of adversity. In a day of evil that you and I live in, Mr. Sam. In the day that you and I are acquainted with today, amen, when evil is on every single corner we turn. Turn on the television. It's nothing but evil. It's nothing but gross darkness. Everywhere we go is evil here and evil there. But I'm telling you about one man called Jesus Christ who said, ye are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. If you'll get the salt of God's spirit on the inside of you. I don't care how many devils of hell come against you to try you. You'll still stand. I said it doesn't matter how many people go back in the world. You'll still stand because a soul of God's spirit abides in you and you're able to conquer all the whims and the wiles of the devil. The reason, the reason, the reason people lose their saltiness is because they quit coming to church. They quit praying. They quit reading God's word. Huh? Listen, we need to quit saying the devil made me do it. Huh? The devil can't keep me out of church. Help me, brother Ant, back there. Hey, the devil can't make me not read God's word. Huh? The devil can't stop me from fasting if I want to fast. Huh? If I want more of his soul in my spirit, the devil can't stop me. He may throw a lot of things at me, but he can't stop me. Sister Nita, I just heard that old song in my spirit because I'm bound for the promised land. I'm bound for the promised land. And Sister Yvonne, I want to make a difference in everybody I come in contact with. Huh? Some of you are here this morning. Huh? Some of you moved up and you got here. Some of you think you're so good, you're about here. Well, I'll open this and let you lick it if you like. Huh? Huh? Sometimes we think we're so spiritually strong, ain't nothing going to affect us. Huh? That's a lie from the devil, folks. Huh? That's a lie from the devil. Huh? 
the only way you can get the salt back in you physically, you got to go back to that salt. And you got to get some in your system. Huh? In order to get salt back in your spiritual, you got to go back to God's Word. Huh? You got to pray. You got to seek Him. You got to call upon Him. Because he said, when the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing. Huh? I told you the story, and I'm not going to go in and repeat it this morning. But I, I, I was, when I met my wife, they were hog killing people. I've seen my father in law kill up to five, six hogs at a time. Huh? You're talking about a mess? That was a mess. Huh? I, I've worked in it. Huh? I knew what it was to stare at a pot and make cracklings. Come on, Preacher Williams, you know about that stuff. Huh? I know what it is to go around the house and you have to hold your nose because they're cleaning out the intestines. Get ready to put some good fresh pudding in them. Hey, I ain't lost. I know where I'm at, baby. Huh? Don't y'all do me like the old fella did me at the ball game the other night. He said, how you doing? I said, I'm doing pretty good for an old man. I'm going to quit using that terminology. He said, how old are you, 60? <laughs> that meant for the Holy Ghost, I'd have slapped him. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know I look bad, but great day. Come on, cut me a little slack. Huh? I looked at him, Brother Mark. I said, I'm 55. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so no, you ain't. You done said it. Uh, come out your heart and come out your mouth. How you doing, brother? Good, good. You're looking salty today. Yes, sir. Well, he said he is. Boy, ain't that a blessing? Huh? Ain't it good to know where you stand with the Lord, folks? Hallelujah. I said, ain't it good to know where you stand with the Lord Jesus Christ? Listen, thank you for that, Brother Neely, because you know how salty you are. You know how spiritual you are. And if you're not where you need to be. He said, listen, come unto him and he'll give us the very desires of our heart according to his word. If you want to draw nigh to God, he says in James, draw nigh unto me. Huh? Ain't enough of devils out there to stop you, brothers and sisters. The only reason you're not as salt as you want to be is because of, hey, take that finger and do this. Don't blame your preacher. Don't point up this way. Huh? Because your preacher preaches you week in and week out trying to help you. And I'm going to stop and tell you right here, this ain't enough to get you as salt as you need to be. It'll start at home in your prayer closets. Huh? I said it'll start home in your prayer closet, down on your knees, uh, on your face, laying before Jesus Christ and praying, Lord, preserve me. And then when all of that gets where it needs to be at home, it'll flow over into here. My, boy, this is good preaching. It'll flow over into the church. How does that happen, preacher? Because people will be shouting. People will be worshiping. People will praise the Lord, Sister Yvonne. You won't have to beg them to shout. You won't have to beg them to pray. You won't have to beg them to raise their hand. You won't have to beg them to pat their foot. You won't have to beg them to, to sing a little bit. Come on, church. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? It's because we have a lack of salt. I'm going to try to get to the light sometime today. If the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salt? It is good for nothing but to be cast down and trodden under the foot. Listen, when we lose our effectiveness, let me say, let me go one step further. When we lose our testimony to a lost and dying world, you might as well be cast out and trodden under the foot of man because your saltiness has lost its saltiness. That, that's why that's why we preachers preach so hard. Don't just live holy in here. It starts out there. That's where people are looking at us. Huh? When you're out there in the streets on your daily job. Huh? 
get close to home right quick here. Just in my spirit this morning. Just come to me. Huh? You see, we can we, we put on a good face here. But if you ain't doing it out there, you're deceiving your own self. Huh? You're deceiving your own self. Because you can speak all you want to with this. If these feet ain't walking the right way, and this life ain't living up to par, you know what people will look at you and say? You're a hypocrite. Because you're one thing on Sundays and another thing on your workplace. Huh? Brothers and sisters, that's why I tell you be very careful. Be very careful. If you offend somebody, be man enough woman to say, I'm sorry. Go back to them and make things right, Sister Dean. Ain't that right? That's what the word tells us, Sister Claire. Hey, Amen. Go back, make things right. Because one of those days, you may be feeling really salty. And you're going to go to that individual that you wronged a month ago. And you're going to say, boy, this salt sure feels good today. Let me give you some salt here, sis. He said, don't you touch me. Not just because you're feeling salty today. I remember what you did to me a month ago. I remember how you talked to me. And you left things in the same manner. And you never made them right. Are y'all with me this morning? Huh? So, so, so we can't afford to do that, brothers and sisters. Because people are watching us. Huh? I've had to say I'm sorry many times. And Brother Kevin probably had to say it a lot more before the Lord comes back. But it's all right. I'm man enough to do that. Huh? I think I read something just yesterday. Nobody has ever choked to death from what? Swallowing pride. Huh? You might have choked on a piece of fat back. Huh? Somebody was eating something. Who was that here eating something the other day broke their tooth off? Was that you, sister? Huh? They were good, though, weren't it, sister? But you paid for it, didn't you? She had her hand like the other day. I said, what's wrong, sister? She, she showed me her tooth down in the bottle. And she said, preach, that fat back was good. And it broke my tooth off. <laughs> now I got to go get it fixed. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling us, brothers and sisters, it's good to shout in the house of God. It's good to run the aisles. It's good to talk in tongues. But make sure you do it out there. Those people are watching us, brothers and sisters. You may say, preacher, I work with a bunch of devils. Who cares? You're the light. And I'm trying to get to the light this morning. You're the salt of the earth. Huh? Hallelujah. And don't you want to make a difference to that, to that group of people you work with? Huh? You see, sometimes, listen. Boy, here's a nerve here. Great day. Sometimes we pray, Lord God, move me. I don't want to be among these bunch of devils. And just maybe God's got you there for a season. Season's good, ain't it? Because it's seasoning. Preach, preacher. Huh? He's got you there to season them for a little while. Because somebody said it like this. Maybe, just maybe, you're the only Bible they'll ever read. My, 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 my. And if that's the case, I want to make sure everything is right. The pages are clear. The writing is plain where they can read what's in the box. Preachers, I can read this and spell it without my glasses. M-O-R-T-O-N. Morton. S-A-L-T. Salt. Boy, I, I read that if you're holding it, preacher. Huh? What do you tell me? Look at that. See, I can't, I can't tell you things in that thing. Huh? 
I can tell you the box is blue. Huh? Preacher, you shouldn't do me like that. He turned around right there. Brother D, I couldn't tell you a thing was in that box. Huh? But I tell you what you could do. Just come to me, preacher. Thank you. You could blindfold me and put a little of this on my tongue. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching better than you're worshiping. Amen. I'm telling you, you can be blindfolded to the max. And somebody put salt on your tongue. And immediately, you can say that salt. That's S-A-L-T. Because I know that I know that I know just what it is. After a while, the salt will start working on them if you'll just keep salt in this in you. Huh? They tell me, well, not only, let me just use an example that I've used. You can take a corroded battery cable and pour salt in its wound. And it'll eat every bit of that off of that cable. Give it a little time. Give it a day or so, wherever, how long it takes. It'll eat it all. I've tried it. Huh? You seen your husband do it, sister? And every once in a while, especially with the older vehicles, nowadays you got those top posts and, and all this kind of mess you got on there nowadays. But you know what? Years ago with the old vehicles, like you used to have there, Brother, brother Small, before you got rid of her, uh, you could take this and sprinkle it on there every once in a while on your battery cable. And you didn't have to worry about no rust. You didn't have to worry about no corruption getting on it. You didn't have to worry about the old car cranking from the battery. <laughs> Woo! You know why? Because you had a preventive medicine on it. Huh? When the devil of hell jumps on me, he forgot I've been sprinkled. I vacuum in here. I clean up. <laughs> he forgot I got a little lonely. Huh? And if he ain't careful, he'll... Boy, something wrong with that fella. Huh? Yeah, I may look a little naive and a little crazy sometimes, but I know where my help cometh from. My help cometh down from above, from the Father of lies, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, but the same yesterday, today, and forever. Does anybody have any thought of the Spirit working on the inside of you? Come on and praise Him. Come on and praise Him. Thank you, sweet Holy Ghost of God. Hey, when you've been sprinkled, it'll keep the devil away. Huh? I've run up with people that don't believe in washing. That definitely keeps me away. Huh? You don't bathe and clean yourself. You ain't got to worry about me hanging around you, honey. Huh? You ain't got to worry about me eating at your house. You'll never have to feed the preacher. Never. Huh? Because I ain't eating your cornbread, honey. Huh? And you got long, nasty fingernails and don't keep them clean. It's going to make me a busy. You ain't got to worry about me. Huh? Come on. I'm just preaching a country message today. Huh? Hallelujah. You know, I go to Cracker Barrel sometimes, sister, and I say, give me that country breakfast in the middle of the afternoon. Country breakfast. I'm giving y'all a country breakfast, and it's flowed into the afternoon now. Huh? Sister, good old salt will keep you on it. Salt of God's word. It'll keep you. When the devils of hell start jumping on you, like I licked that Bible while ago, they'll start licking me and say, oh, wait a minute, yeah, now. This fellow don't quite taste right. Huh? He got too much salt in his system. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Huh? 
Boy, I've been praying over this thing. I feel good about preaching this morning. Amen. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, listen to me. Huh? The devil knows when you've been salted. I said that about my father-in-law a while ago because he used to hang up his hams in the smokehouse. First time I ever walked in a smokehouse, I thought, my God, somebody's dead in this place. <laughs> and it was. There were some dead cows hanging up in there. Parts of them, anyhow. Huh? But I watched him one day, preacher, when he salted that meat. Man, he had to have a bunch of this stuff here, not a little bit. And he'd pick up, not an arm on a cow, what they call it when they pick it up, shoulder? And rub all up under here. Well, y'all just take my word for it for now. And he rubbed that salt all up in there. He said, son. I said, yes, sir. He big fella. Dark skinned Indian man. Bow headed. He'd been, in a, he'd been in the army. Sergeant or something. They called him. Actually, his name was. They called him Sergeant. His name was John, but they called him Sergeant. And I learned why they called him Sergeant, too. He put a buckshot in you right quick. Uh, he didn't play. So when I met that little lady friend back down in the nursery this morning, when I met her, I knew how to straighten up. Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Huh? I might have acted like a dummy, but I knew I weren't one. Huh? Come on, y'all with me this morning. Huh? But one day he said, son, you know what I'm doing? I said, no, sir. I weren't raised up killing new hogs. Huh? He said, I'm salting the meat. You see, if you put that right there on it, in a little while, the flies will blow it. Huh? Because it won't keep them away. But if you go ahead and get the real deal and rub it all in the joints and the creases. Huh? Anybody in here ever used old Ben Gay? <laughs> Y'all ain't got the raise your head because you already, your face is done and told me you're guilty. <laughs> Of Sorbine Jr. and it smells to the highest heavens. Huh? I thought I'd never use that stuff. Huh? And I went to bed two nights this week with it on my neck and shoulders. And the wife says, stay on your side, please. <laughs> she don't call the name up. She said, you put on that stuff, didn't you? I know what some of you are thinking. They, they make it now where you can't smell it. But you know what, sister? When I can't smell it, it acts like it ain't working. <laughs> huh? I bought me some of that no-scent kind. But it just seems like Mr. Sam, it ain't working. I want to smell it. It opens up my sinuses. Huh? <laughs> Makes the bed cover stink. <laughs> Makes my pillowcase smell like me the next night. Hey man, have you lost it, preacher? I lost it a long time ago. But Jesus found it, picked it up, and made it better. Hey man. Ain't that right, Sister Terry? Talk to me, girl. Huh? He said, I'm rubbing all this meat in, son. So when I want me a good, fresh piece of meat, I can come out here to the smokehouse. And I watched him. He had one of them hatches, I call them. And he reached over and cut him off a big hunk of meat. Boy, and I learned to eat that stuff. Boy, it's good to the bone. It ain't good for you, but it's good to you. Huh? But as long as you had a smokehouse. Father-in-law's been gone many years. My wife's mother's been gone now, many years now. But Brother Anthony, something I found out ain't gone. Smokehouse. I was there just the other week, and I stood outside there. Oh, wooden door about rotted off now. I said, my mind went back to my father-in-law standing in there with his pipe in his mouth. He smoked the pipe. That good smelling tobacco. And Brother Marty, I could just picture him putting salt on that meat. Because he didn't want nothing to take his meat. I'm trying with all my 
with all my might this morning to give you something. That when the devil comes, he don't steal you away from me, from Jesus Christ. I'm trying to salt you from head to toe. Every crook, every crevice, every place. Get some salt in it. Because if we don't, the devil will send his imps our way and he'll find our weak spots. I said the devil will find our weak spots and he will blow us and destroy us. They tell me, and I've seen some of the medical stuff of people going to a doctor and a wound won't heal. They'll take maggots. And I know this ain't good before lunch, but they'll take maggots and put them in there. And close it up. It's sort of about like this salt, you see. Y'all hold on, I got a couple more hours. I ain't got to the light yet. And those maggots will eat away all the infection. Until that thing starts closing up and then they'll take him out. This right here will eat away. This is the spiritual now. This will eat away all of the corruption. It will eat away all the corruption in our hearts, in our lives, and it will keep the devil at bay. Why? Because it's a preservative. It's a preventative. It's a medicine. It's an antidote. And it will keep your soul intact. The problem is, we don't use it enough. Anybody here ever got arthritis? Bersitis? Sisteritis? Walkabitis? You know what you'll do? You'll find any kind of cream you can put on there, honey, to make it ease off some. Won't we, Sister Neely? Huh? Shot, it don't matter. Just ease the pain, preacher. Ease the pain. I was at work one day over at Right with Plywood, and they said WD-40 works good on everything. I said, let's try it. And I sprayed my knees. And it ran all down my shin. I didn't care. Huh? They said it worked. I'm going to try it. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? I'm giving you something that will work. I'm giving you something that'll work this morning. And, and, and I'm not a betting man, don't believe in betting, but if I was, I'd, I'd bet you one thing. If you try this, it'll work. Huh? You won't go back to the drugstore and turn it in and say, this didn't help me. Can you prescribe something else? Because uh, once you ever get into this, it'll take care of every pain, uh, every element, uh, every devil of hell, uh, every ounce of corruption. Uh, it'll destroy it, uh, and it'll get rid of you. How many know that this morning? Uh, how many has ever been touched by this book? How many has ever been touched by the Lord? Uh, have you been, my God Almighty, uh, have you been greased lately by the word of the Lord? Huh? I said, have you been greased lately? Huh? You know, they used to make, I'm trying to hurry, I need to get to the light someday. They used to make lawnmowers with, with what they call them things on there where you could grease them. Fittings. Fittings, is that right? Grease fittings. They don't do that anymore hardly. If you want them on there, you put them on there yourself now. Grease your lawnmower, uh, the deck and all that kind of stuff, you know. They don't want it greased. You know why? They want you back in a few years. Huh? With the deck screaming and rotted and rusted and everything else. Amen? Huh? Baron's making a noise. That's the way some of y'all when you walk. Creak. 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 
I'm not picking on you. Huh? But Brother Luke, we know how that is. Don't you come in feeling good and you walk out limping. You need crutches. <laughs> huh? Don't feel bad. I ain't said nothing about I got a place in the side of my foot right there at night. I sleep, you know, with my foot like that. And my foot's killing me. My wife said, you've done this, you've done I said, I ain't done nothing. I just went to bed feeling good and got up hurting. Huh? Y'all don't know nothing about that, do you? I'm 55 now, pray God. Huh? Sister Yvonne, I'm like the old song said, I can cry if I want to. <laughs> Oh, my God, sister, please. She's asked me what I'm going to do when I'm 75. I'm going to be in heaven with Jesus, hopefully. Because <laughs> uh, if it's not, if it's much longer, we like John on the Isle of Patmos. Come, Lord Jesus, come. I can't take this no more. Huh? <laughs> that another 20 years? Oh, my goodness, preacher. God's good this morning, church. I'll get to the light another time. I know you're not going to sit here and listen to me. I just made some, ex- some things here this morning, and, and I hope this was a blessing to you. Huh? It's time to take this and get rid of it. Leave this for the animals. And take up Jesus Christ. You know why? Because I want us all to make it, church. I want us to make it this morning. And ever how much of this it takes to keep me greased down and salted. Because, Sister Kay, I don't want to come to the end of this race. See this salt on the floor? And he's threw me out on the floor and walked on me. And said, you're no good for nothing now. Wouldn't it be sad, wouldn't it be sad to come to the end of this life and stand before the judge of all the earth and he say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, because I never knew you. And the devil's imps of hell grab you by your limbs and drag you off into a place of outer darkness, a place the Bible calls hell. I've been a little comical with you this morning, but I'm not now. Because it's serious business, fellas. Serious sisters. It's heaven or hell. You're either going up or you're going down. There is no in between. There is no gray areas. It's black and white, friend. Jesus said you're either with me or you're against me. See, we're living, we're living in a society that don't want nothing but just a little taste. I said it before because Brother Harry Clark made an uh, indenture on me one time years ago. He said people want about $2 worth of God. Huh? Brother Kevin, I seen a fellow pull up to the tank the other day uh, at the gas pump and counted his change. He got maybe a couple dollars. And I said, bless his heart, he didn't hardly get a gallon. Huh? And I tell you what, if he's going any distance, he'll, he won't make it. If you stay on this right here and you go any distance at all, won't make it. Because hmm? that won't take care of you in the heat of the day. <coughs> I said this old saying many times, my father-in-law said it. He said, son, always eat a good breakfast. I don't do it now, I should. He said, because that'll hold you in the heat of the day. You can just about skip lunch if you'll get a good, solid breakfast. <coughs> It'll take you on to the afternoons. Will it not, folks? Amen. Huh? My wife gets me. She said, it's funny how you never eat breakfast at home anymore, but you'll go to Cracker Barrel in the afternoon and eat a breakfast. Maybe I'm mixed up, sister. I don't know. Nights and days. 
when I can go down in the afternoon, boy, and I can order me a, a country breakfast with a side order of them panty cakes. Huh? With some uh, pecans in them, and I just hurt myself. Huh? What are you saying, preacher? I just want to help you. Come on, Sister Kay. I got to quit here somewhere. Brothers and sisters, uh, the bottom line is this morning I asked you a question that I will re-ask you now. I help my sister because she's a lot older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you, are we making a difference when people walk by our grave if that happens? Can they honestly look at us in a, in a casket and say they made a difference in me? Huh? Now, brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but there's a song. I, I tried this one time, and I never could get it together. Uh, it's just left my, my trains pulled out of the station. <laughs> oh, I hate those moments. They call them senior moments, but I don't like that word. <laughs> They try to give me senior coffee. Now I say keep it. Because <laughs> I don't drink coffee. That's why I tell them to keep it. Oh. Song talks about this and that and the other. <laughs> you, you've really made a difference in me this morning. You're going to get the beat down. But in the end of the song, it talks about his Sunday school teacher. It talks about the missionary that came by. Anybody know what, huh? Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I tried, I bought that one time and I wanted to sing it so bad and I never could get it together. But he said, I remember the missionary. I remember the Sunday school teacher. You're looking at one this morning. That's what I remember. That's made a difference in my life. I told you about a lady. Can I take five more minutes of your time? I told you about a lady that was blind that I used to take to gospel singings. After I got married, I met her and Sister Allie for Bullard. You talking about a Holy Ghost saint of God. But she was blind, and I would take her to sing. As Brother Neely, I wasn't a preacher at that time. I was just a Christian. And she'd say, son, slow down. There's a curve just up here. I'm on back roads, don't know where I'm at. And sure enough, preacher, just in a little way, she says, it's coming, son. I'd slow down. And there's a steep curve. She knew all those roads. She could just tell me this and that and the other. But her testimony that always stood out to me, Sister Marie, was this. When she got old and feeble, had a little tiny ball here of hair with about 20 bobby pins in it. Not hardly enough to do nothing with. She'd stand up, hold on to that old bench and sing. And she'd say, thank God I'm saved. Sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized. She never left it out. I watched her on her deathbed eat up with cancer. We would go there and we would have home cottage prayer meetings. We don't do that anymore. But you remember those days to go there with the old saints of God. We'd cry and we'd sing and we'd pray. I heard an old song yesterday that reminded me of that. He said, we're going to sing. We're going to pray. Till the Holy Ghost comes. And Sister Neely, I watched her on her deathbed. Body jerking, not from the pain but from the power of the Holy Ghost. Had cotton swabs packed in her holes. Foul smell in the room. But on the day she went out of this world, 
she went out under the power of the Holy Ghost. You're talking about making an impression on a young Christian? That, 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 that thing just impressed my life, and it still does today. And she's been gone many, 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 many years now. But she made a difference in me, Brother Neely, that I'll never forget. Can people walk by you one day and look at your casket and say, they made a difference on me and in me, and I'll never forget. They told me about a man, and I'll never forget. Heard him sing a song one time about a man called Jesus. I'll never forget it. And they could say these things on and on and on about us, Brother Mike. Are you making a difference in somebody's life today? And if you're not, I hope conviction will eat you up until you make a difference in somebody's life. Huh? See, not because of me, but because I've tried to live the best I know how before my brother-in-law, Rocky. He didn't call his preacher and tell him he got saved. He didn't call him and ask him for prayer. He called me. Because for many years we were neighbors, and I tried to live the life in front of him. I never let him see me doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. Contrary to God's word, Brother Small. And now after 20 years of an alcoholic, he calls me up and asks me for prayer. Calls me up and tells me he got saved. That's what I want to hear, folks. Huh? I love to see y'all shout. I love to see you have a good time in the Lord. And all that's wonderful and pleasing. But people ain't going to remember that about you. They're going to remember you how you treated them. How you talked to them. How you loved them. That's what they're going to remember. I'm closing this morning. I know I've been a little lengthy. But I don't apologize for that either. Because I heard Brother Small on Sunday night talking, preaching to us. I remember them days, Brother Small, where people didn't get in a hurry to leave church. They didn't have nowhere else to go, no how. They were having such a time in church, they didn't care about leaving the clock could strike two o'clock in the afternoon. They didn't care. Huh? All they came to do was have church. They came to sing and pray till the Holy Ghost came. We need to get back to that church. We need to get back. Would you stand all over the building with me? Would you stand? I'm going to close. I'm nowhere near done this message, and I knew I wouldn't, but see all the markers in my Bible with different scriptures I wanted to share this morning but I just can't get there but I hope you got the gist of what I was trying to preach this morning you see this soul will work on us friend speaking of that before I preached I was sitting there and the Lord spoke to me and told me to have a healing service tonight If you're sick in your body, I want you to come tonight. And we're going to lay hands on you if it takes me all night. I want to pray for you. We've got some people sitting in this congregation that you don't even know of that needs a divine miracle from the Lord. Huh? They need a healing in their bodies. We've got several right in this congregation that's walking around with cancer in their body that they know of. The rest of us just don't know it yet. They need healing for their bodies. Jesus laid hands on the sick and they recovered. I'm not Jesus, but I want to do as he did. And I want to pray for you. And that's tonight, but right now, if you don't know Jesus Christ with every head bowed and every eye closed, saints, would you pray? If you once had salt in you and you lost it spiritually, you can come home today. I love my sheet, and I'm going to run out of my seat.
another life. You come home today. The salt's still waiting on you. It's still good. <laughs>